submit to me, you will take the guise I have given you. Never. Curse the human corpus, and curse the human consciousness you've given me. Far happier was I as naught but a carefree cat. Ours was happiness once, and can be again. Why would you resist such promise? Because you are no longer a woman worthy of love. Maybe your brother's doing, but you are a ghoul beyond redemption. This entire forest is nothing but your abattoir, and it sickens me. Perhaps you are meant to be my... What? Do I spy? Remarkable. A living, breathing something, it seems. You dare to approach me here, mortal? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I do? The sister of the king, of course. The phantom of the woods, of course. The mother of all corpses, of course. The ruler of the dead. It is self-evident. I am Cassandra, queen of the phantom forest. And you, you have come where you are not welcome. The only king, Bracchus Rex. He rules all of Rivalon, and I, his double, rule too. For a time, at least. We were forged together by our very souls, and all that was his was mine, and all that was mine, his. But it's no wonder you haven't heard of me. He's gouged me from history one, statue one, tablet one, scroll at a time. But make no mistake, I live. Strange, isn't it? How a love greater than the gods themselves can tear you from time. But time matters little to me anymore. No, it floats past me unfelt as light upon a blind eye. To hide his weakness, to conceal his greatest misdeed. My brother was a kind ruler before he became a rabid tyrant, but his descent into madness was swift. Power he gained, and with it a terrible fear of death that hounded him ceaselessly night and day. He stationed a hundred guards outside his bedchamber and mine, but still he kept awake all night expecting assassins. He soon determined that he must diminish his risk. I, his sister, forged to his soul was his greatest liability. My death would spell his, and so he sought to break the bond between us. My brother is a clever sort. Once he sets his mind to a task, it's good as done. Bracchus discovered that while we lived, the forge could not be broken. But this did not deter him. No, for Bracchus, there are only temporary difficulties. And so he turned me into an immortal creature. Living, yes, but wedded to death. A lich. Destined to roam, ever half alive among the world of the living. We were lost to one another. We who had walked hand in hand through all of life. We who shared each thought, each trial with perfect understanding between us. I was cast out and aside. And Bracchus, empowered by his new freedom, went on to rule. But I've never forgotten his betrayal. No, I've spent centuries searching, seeking, until the perfect solution appeared before me. How better to have guaranteed my brother hated his own cold, cruel heart than to make him feel my torment. I discovered how to restore our soul forge, and I determined to bind our souls once more. The torment of the never-arriving grave would have haunted him as it haunts me, 
The pain his betrayal caused me would have been his to save her. But in the end, my brother found a worse fate than any I could have devised. Source King that he was. Brachus was stricken down, not once, but twice. First opposed, then resurrected, then defeated once more. I can think of no finer torture for that proud madman than to come to the cusp of glory, only to be cast back down for all time. Is that so? You, a frail mortal, laid low the eternal crown of Bracchus Rex. How sinfully inglorious. Yes, how humiliating for the so-called Lord of Chaos to find himself run through by a slave to age and order. I do believe thanks are in order. To show my gratitude, I will allow you to roam my woods at your own discretion. This is no mean feat that I swear to tolerate the stench of your living flesh, mortal. Take it as a tremendous honor. Is that so? And how might I weigh the debt of a mortal? Could you do more for me than, say, a boar, a wolf? Does your kind not serve me best when the lovely blush of rot swells along your delicate hide? Still, I do suppose we could come to an agreement. Ahu, the one I love, is reluctant to admit that he loves me too. He clings to the past like a fading old man. So I desire to drive him from denial into acceptance. He is a stubborn one, though, that pussycat. And he has mastered the magic I once filled him with better than I had foreseen. That is why I need an ingredient even he cannot resist. An ingredient called Stasis Fern. There is a spirit in this forest called Shiera who is known to possess like rarities. Alas, she seems to have quite vanished. It's simple, really. Find her, obtain the stasis fern, and the spell you desire shall be yours. It is an anomaly. A plant that is said to have grown in another realm altogether than Rivalon. The first garden, a place of myth and miracle. There, so the spirits of this forest told me, it bloomed and delighted with its fragrance no more. Yet taken from the first garden and brought here, it took on source-like particularities. Its magic is one of permanence. A magic as eternal as the world from whence it came, and with it, what I want will be mine. Ahu, oh, my lover forever. Obviously, but that would be a disaster now, wouldn't it? A disaster of such proportions that I'd have to vent my rage on your innards. There is nothing left to discuss, oh frail little thing. Source Hunter, how glad I am to see you. Tread carefully. Weigh your every word. Cassandra has become more devious than I ever dared dream. You hit the nail on the head, Hunter. That is exactly what Cassandra wants to do. Kill the part of me that is cat, and claim for herself that which is human. No! I cannot bear it. I cannot. I am a cat, and always was. I remember my many siblings. My mother giving us suckle, licking me clean with a gentle purr. Yes, I remember the freedom of a pre-conscious existence. That is who I am, not a man. For what is it that humanity has given me? Nothing but suffering. Nothing but hurt and heartbreak. So stop her, Hunter. For the love of the Seven, stop Cassandra. 
To be human for all time is a fate worse to me than death. All too well. Even in my human guise, I'd have gone quite as white as I am now at the mere mention of that otherworldly wonder. Stasis Fern. In Cassandra's hands, an instrument of ultimate torture. Ambrosia in my own. She'd use it to consolidate my human form everlastingly. You cannot... But should you find it, Hunter, please bring it to me instead. With Stasis Fern, that ultimate catnip, I can become the being I most desire to be. A cat once more and forever. Careful, friend, for it'll be your death, not hers. She boasts that the magic she weaves makes her immortal, and I don't doubt the might of her sorcery. Nevertheless, where there is source, source hunters follow. Perhaps there may be a weakness in her fortification still. This forest teems with wretched souls. They may know things we know not. You will submit to me. You will take the guise I have given you. Never. Curse the human corpus, and curse the human consciousness you've given me. Far happier was I as not but a carefree cat. Ours was happy as one.
Spotted something. Intruder spied. Intruder spied. Intruder spied. Intruder spied. The Temple of Death welcomes only its likeness.
spied. The Temple of Death welcomes only its likeness. Spotted something. Intruders by Intruders by Where is spy. our spirit? Where has she fled? Intruders by She cannot be defeated. Into the spy.
strange. It refuses to transport me. Living matter may not enter the Temple of Death, recall. to transport me. I suppose living matter may not enter there. <laughs> 